This video is supported by Brilliant.org. Did you know the center of the Milky Way is basically a giant daiquiri? Scientists studying the Sagittarius B2 gas cloud at the center of the Milky Way galaxy found that it's actually very rich in ethyl formate. Ethyl formate is a building block of amino acids, which are building blocks of proteins, which are building blocks of life itself. But it's also a component that gives raspberries their flavor. And it smells like rum. So it's basically a giant daiquiri. Or a bubblegum flavor. How has no bubblegum company ever capitalized on this? Very, very Milky Way flavor, Hubba Falaba. It's a galaxy of flavor. And they found the ethyl formate with the IRAM radio telescope, and the reason why they were able to find it is kind of fascinating. What this molecule does is it absorbs radiation and then re-emits it at a different radio frequency, which the IRAM telescope was able to pick up. These kinds of investigative techniques have taught us some very specific things about the universe, but it's also illuminated some questions that we still don't have the answers to. So here's five of the biggest unexplained space mysteries. Number one, missing baryonic matter. You probably already know that the universe is made up of 70% dark energy, 23% dark matter, and only 4.6% is regular baryonic matter as we know it. And it's called baryonic matter because baryons are the types of fundamental particles that go on to form atoms. But did you know that of the 4.6% of matter that we actually know about, 90% of it is missing. This is called the missing baryonic matter problem, and it's plagued astrophysicists for years. The deal is that when cosmologists measure out how much baryonic matter there should be in the universe, it's nowhere near what we actually see. All right, so there's a couple of ways that they've measured this. One is called nucleosynthesis, and that's basically the process of fundamental particles becoming actual atoms and matter after the Big Bang. So the more baryonic matter that's out there, the quicker this would form heavier elements like lithium. But if there is less baryonic matter, it would form lighter elements like hydrogen and helium. So by looking at the chemical composition of the universe, they can figure out how much baryonic matter there was starting out right after the Big Bang. And the amount that they're measuring is nowhere near what we're observing. Another measurement looks for irregularities in the CMB, the idea being that since baryonic matter interacts with photons and light, it would leave some kind of imprint on the CMB. Now the amount that's missing in each of these different measurements is a little bit different, but it is close. So where's all the missing matter? Well, this is a mystery that's actually been solved, partly. 2017, a team from Edinburgh University published a paper that theorized that these missing baryons might could be found in clouds of ionized gas surrounding galaxies in the filaments of the cosmic web. When you look at the universe on the grandest scales, the galaxies don't just float around uniformly, they tend to clump together into filaments that interconnect into a giant web, a cosmic web. And these scientists theorize that the filaments could be filled up with a highly ionized gas called warm hot intergalactic matter, or WIMS. This is a million degree gas that's very thin but shows up in X-ray observations. The scientists did the math and found that these WIMS could account for 50 to 70 percent of the missing baryonic matter, so we're getting there, but there's still a lot to be found. Number two, the source of high energy cosmic rays. I covered this in a previous video on the Oh My God particle, but cosmic rays are basically high energy particles from deep space that are 85% of the time just a simple proton, a proton being the nucleus of a hydrogen atom, but 12% of the time they're alpha particles, which are the nuclei of helium atoms. The remaining 3% of the particles are made up of electrons and lighter elements like lithium, beryllium, and boron. The thing is, those elements are actually pretty rare in the universe, but they're very overrepresented in cosmic rays. So what gives there? It's believed that these light elements actually started as heavier elements like carbon and oxygen, which are a lot more prevalent in the universe, but they got stripped over time as they collided with hydrogen atoms and interstellar gas. But what's doing that? And where is it coming from? A paper released last year from the Pierre Auger Observatory that used data collected over 12 years determined that these cosmic rays are actually intergalactic in origin. It was thought once upon a time that these particles could be coming from the center of the Milky Way galaxy, but due to these observations we now know that they are coming from a different direction. Not from our galaxy, but from other galaxies. Now these are just your garden variety cosmic rays. There's also ultra high energy cosmic rays, which are capable of holding 10 to the 20 electron volts. These are baffling for a lot of reasons. For one, we have no idea how a particle can be accelerated to this rate. It's actually faster than what we do at the Large Hadron Collider. And it also breaks a theoretical barrier called the GZK cutoff. 
The Gryzen Zatzepin Kuzmin limit, or the GZK limit, says that it's impossible for a particle to have more energy than 5 times 10 to the 19th electron volts due to the eventual slowing that would occur over time as the particle travels against the cosmic microwave background radiation. Now this would suggest that particles that are traveling faster than that limit, which are called trans-GZK particles, would be coming from a point of origin fairly close by. But there's nothing out there close by that could be doing this that we can see. It's assumed that the most high energy particles in the universe must be coming from some of the most powerful forces in the universe, the kind that you would find at the supermassive black hole at the center of a galaxy. Well, that's nowhere local. Although there is a theory that a particle can be ricocheted back and forth inside the shock wave of a supernova, giving it extra momentum and flinging it out at this kind of speed. But right now, all we've got is guesses. The origin of high energy cosmic rays continues to be one of the most baffling mysteries in the universe. Number three, fast radio bursts. In 2007, researcher Duncan Lorimer and his team were going over some old data that had been recorded at the Parkes Observatory in Australia when they ran across something really weird, an extremely strong radio signal that only lasted five milliseconds. So take a second and divide it into a thousand. This lasted five of those. But it was extremely powerful and weirdly only in the radio spectrum. This particular anomaly was called the Lorimer burst, but since then 17 more of these fast radio bursts have been observed and have been called fast radio bursts. The problem with FRBs is that it's next to impossible to figure out where they come from because they're so short. And they're also totally random and never repeat each other. The first one that we've ever caught in real time was in 2015. Because they happen so randomly and infrequently, they're thought to be the result of some kind of cataclysmic events like supernova or black holes colliding. And because it's only in the radio frequency, it's thought that it happened really far away because that energy that came out of it has been redshifted into the radio spectrum. But this got thrown for a loop recently because they did find one repeating FRB called FRB 121102. And because it was able to repeat, they were able to watch it in real time and get some really interesting information on it. For one thing, they were actually able to trace its origin a little bit. They were able to trace it to a dwarf galaxy in the constellation Auriga, 3 billion light years away. The other thing is that this signal was twisted by something called Faraday rotation, which basically polarizes the radio frequency. And they found that this was 500 times more twisted than normal FRBs. Their best guess as to what could be doing this was that the radio signal passed through an incredibly dense and incredibly powerful magnetic plasma field, like the kind you see at the center of galaxies. In fact, radio signals coming from the center of the Milky Way galaxy are similarly twisted. But why would a galaxy be throwing off massive spikes of radio waves at random intervals? It could be that it's a directional thing, and the center of the galaxy turns, and as it turns towards us, it kind of swipes past our planet and appears to us like a burst. And that might be causing all of them, but it just happens to pass us by once and then the rotation of the galaxy never turns back that way again. But it still doesn't account for why that one repeating one had 500 times more twist than a regular one. It may turn out there's actually multiple kinds of FRBs. So there are still many mysteries around the FRBs that we're trying to figure out. Number four, reionization of the universe. The Big Bang is just an onion of mysteries. Every time you peel back one mystery, there's an even bigger one underneath. And one of the biggest ones is the reionization of the universe. You know, reionization. That thing. This might require an explanation. So right after the Big Bang, the universe expanded rapidly, known as the inflationary period. And it was filled with ionized fundamental particles and was fully opaque. But then a thing called recombination happened, which caused all these ionized particles, protons and electrons, to come together to form hydrogen gas, which basically neutralized the universe. This was about 380,000 years after the Big Bang. And this was the beginning of the universe's dark ages because there was nothing to create light in the early universe. No stars, no galaxies, just a universe of neutral hydrogen. But then between 400 million and a billion years after the Big Bang, something interesting occurred. This hydrogen gas clumped together in large clouds that became the first stars and quasars and galaxies. These released energetic photons into the universe, which reionized the hydrogen. Hence, the universe became reionized. The problem is when we look back at the stellar density of the universe at the time, that includes both the number and size of the stars, there's not nearly enough energy to reionize everything. So where did this ionizing radiation come from? Nobody knows for sure. And it's one of the biggest mysteries in astrophysics. But of course, there is a theory. In a paper from 2016, a team of physicists supposed that it might have something to do with what's called the Lyman continuum. It's a special type of radiation that doesn't normally emit from galaxies because it runs into a barrier of uh, neutral hydrogen. But they did find a galaxy, they call it a green pea galaxy because it glows green. And it actually, they think, was very similar to the types of galaxies that existed in the early universe. And they found that this galaxy, coined J0925 plus 1403, actually emits this Lyman radiation far more than most galaxies do, which would allow it to ionize 40 times more gas than a regular galaxy would. 
And if this was a common type of galaxy in the early universe, it could be a part of the reionization puzzle. And number five, the Himiko Cloud. Sticking with the weird reionization epoch of the early universe, in 2009, scientists found a gigantic object 12.9 billion light years away, dating from the very earliest universe. An object that shouldn't exist. It's one of the oldest objects ever found in the universe, and it's huge, 55,000 light years across. It's a very faint blob with mysterious origins that was found by the Japanese Subaru telescope, so the scientists decided to name it the Himiko Cloud, or the Himiko Blob, named after a very mysterious empress of the same name. To this day, scientists are not sure what this is or how it got there. It might be a huge cloud of ionized gas powered by a supermassive black hole, it could be a merging of two different galaxies together, or it could just be one massive 40 billion sun-sized galaxy. According to the team lead Masami Ochi, he said, I'm very surprised by this discovery. We've never imagined that such a large object could exist at this early stage of the universe's history. According to the concordance model of the Big Bang cosmology, small objects form first and then merge to produce larger systems. This blob had a size typical of present-day galaxies when the age of the universe was only 800 million years old, only 6% of the age of today's universe. Other blobs have been found dating from 2 to 3 billion years after the Big Bang, but these were much, much smaller, so the fact that Himiko was much older and bigger is a complete mystery. Over the past 10 years, cosmologists have been hunting for another Himiko-sized early galaxy, but have come up completely empty-handed. Himiko seems to be an absolute anomaly in every way, one that challenges our assumptions about galaxy formation in the early universe and the evolution of the universe after the Big Bang. Often in science, it seems that the more we learn, the more we learn how much we have to learn. It seems like every single question that we answer just brings up more questions. So can we ever really fully understand the universe? Or are we just making it more mysterious? I guess if nothing else, at least we know what it tastes like. If the universe is a big old mystery to you and you want to learn more about it, a great place to start is Brilliant.org. Brilliant has a whole course on astronomy that shows you the tools astronomers use to calculate the size of objects, how far away they are, and what they're made of. Do you ever hear me throwing out facts about the universe and ask yourself, but how did they figure that out? Well, Brilliant walks you through it. You'll cover everything from the life cycle of a star, from a cloud of gas to a stellar remnant, to the likelihood of alien life on other planets. You can sign up for free at brilliant.org slash answers with Joe and get access to their free weekly puzzles and brain teasers to help keep your mind sharp. And the first 295 people who sign up for the premium subscription that gives you access to all their courses get 20% off for life. I love Brilliant. I think you will too. Brilliant.org slash answers with Joe. Links down in the description. I want to thank Brilliant.org for sponsoring this video, and as always, I want to thank the Answer Files on Patreon who are helping to keep the lights on around here. Your support means the absolute world to me. And there's some new people that have joined. This is going to be a long list because I have not done this for a couple of weeks, so bear with me, but I want to get through all these. There's Daniel Au, David McKay, Sean Vickerin, Trauma Llama, Eva Machikova, Morton Kelsey, Steve Reberg, Donald C. Klein, Mario Pellegrini, Domajaj Classic, uh, Scuda Voriel, Patrick Niles, Janet Hasselhoff, TJ, Osmar Caesar Camillo, Jonathan Mann, Matt Herndon, Luke Purdy, Chris Carrick and Broly, Holger Dietrich, uh, Richard Clements, Sergey Marchenko, Chris Rechler, Laura Sanborn, Three Dots, uh, Jonathan Davies, Evan Davies, Christian Zuppinger, Philip Petriopalo, David A. Bromer, Doug Leppard, John Squires, Joseph Krahales, Kerry Cavas, Keith Crash, Andrew Trunkfield, and Mark Laub. All right, cool. <laughs> I think I got three of those names right. Now, thank you guys so much for supporting and welcome to the tribe. If you would like to join them, get access to cool perks like behind the scenes stuff, uh, percentage off on merchandising and that kind of stuff, you can go to patreon.com slash answers with Joe. Please like and share this video if you liked it. And if this is your first time here, please check out some of my other videos on similar science topics. You might like those. And if you do, uh, hit subscribe because then you'll be first in line to see on my next videos, which come out Mondays and Thursdays. All right, thanks again for watching. You guys go out now and have an eye-opening week. And I'll see you back here next Monday. Love you guys. Take care.